In this video, I'll be sharing my new favorite desktop CNC. It's the Maker Dreams Evo 1. It's rigid, accurate, fast, and strong, so stick around for the details. Today, we're taking a look at the Maker Dreams Evo 1 desktop CNC. If you haven't heard of it, you want to stick around as this machine is one of the best performing and capable machines currently available on the market. The thing that's great about the maker industry is how it's slowly and methodically bringing industrial capabilities to our workshop. One of the fastest evolving industries, driven by creative folks like you and I, pushing mechanical and innovation to limits like never before. Over the course of the last few years, our collective machine upgrades have defined the ideal machine setup. And while it continues to evolve, surprisingly, very few vendors check all the boxes. The Evo 1 is an exception. With its beautiful looks and specs to match, this machine will put you ahead of the competition. The outside dimensions of 21 by 18 by 17 inches, the wood and aluminum inlay give it a mature and well-designed look that complements the shop. A quick peek inside reveals that this machine is more than just good looks. For starters, it's got a half kilowatt air-cooled spindle with an ER16 collet. With the ability to run end mills up to 3 8 of an inch, you'll have lots of flexibility in choosing the right tool. Of course, depending on your material, feeds, and speeds, your mileage may vary. Next, we have 12 millimeter linear rails on the X and Z axis, and 16 millimeter linear rails on the Y axis. It also has C5 12 millimeter ball screws on all axis for great precision and less than 2 thou backlash. Cutting hard materials, this prevents chatter and vibration while giving you a clean finish with less noise. NEMA 17 stepper motors on all axis as well, giving up to 35 pounds of cutting force. The gantry of the machine is solid, mostly milled from half inch aluminum plate and a couple of 80-20 cross members. And measuring in at a little over eight and a half inches by 15 and a quarter inches, that's 220 millimeters by 390, it's got one of the largest tables in its class. It's nine millimeters thick, fully threaded, 25 millimeters on center table, which also comes with a one inch thick spoil board for any through cuts that you may need to perform. Accessory wise, it comes with a bunch of goodies, including a set of six ER16 collets ranging from three to eight millimeters. So you have to pick up the larger collets if you want to fully utilize the ER16. Comes with a external e-stop switch, a Z touch plate, both of which plug into the back of the machine, a nice low profile vise, and a set of hold down clamps and the essentials, the A to B USB cable, and lastly, it comes with a machine logbook, which I think is a great gesture and best practice to keep notes on servicing the machine and whatnots. The machine came well packaged and organized. In addition to the physical product of the CNC, they also do offer a simple CNC software application that you can download from their website. It's called CreeMove, and it's a slightly customized and branded version of the open source CNC software named Candle. If you haven't seen Candle, check it out. It's got some pretty cool features. And as I understand, they're working on a new version, but since the machine leverages Gerbil 1.1, you can use any CNC software that you prefer, like Candle or Universal G-Code Center or CNC JS. If you want to leverage my Stream Deck pendant that I demoed on the Shapeoko, you'll want to make sure that your software has the hotkeys needed to support it. Now you may notice on this machine, I have a standard Amazon Mister, which is something I added to let me take full advantage of the machine's power to mill aluminum. I drilled a couple holes in the back acrylic and then used the stock bolts to mount the mister on the gantry and tank on the back side of the machine. Now I'm using a mix of water and IPA to cool the end mill and I wouldn't use any heavy cutting fluid as the machine's just not designed to handle much else. Plus the sidewalls are wood so I'd use this sparingly if you decide to do the same. With the basics covered, let's cut to the chase and see how this thing mills. For this test, I'll be milling a couple of my Arcator 3 handheld bodies, one in hard maple and the other in 6061 aluminum. All toolpaths are generated from Fusion 360 using the Gerbil Post Processor. Feeds and speeds were calculated using HSM Advisor, using a custom machine profile that I've shared in the HSM Advisor cloud. I'll be running these at around 75% of the calculated speeds to leave some overhead for this machine. HSM Advisors are calculated for ideal and optimal scenarios. So for aluminum, you would expect to have flood cooling to be able to meet those feeds and speeds. Which is the reason that I'm dialing them down a little bit. For the hardwood, I'm running adaptive clearing operation with a quarter inch three fluid end mill at a half inch depth of cut and radial load of 0.1 inch at around 50 inches per minute. This is a deep and heavy cut, difficult for most desktop machines. Definitely more aggressive than I would normally take for this wood, but in this case, being safe doesn't really push the machine. For each of these runs, I've got four mount points that use M5 screws that go down into the table to make sure that the stock stays well positioned. 
So as I'm running the operation, I'm sitting on the edge of discomfort. But in the end, it didn't have bad performance. While it had consistent torque to run the feeds and speeds, this thing just plowed through the stock. But in the real world, I would probably dial it back to prefer quality over speed, and you'll definitely want to be sure you have good fixturing to hold your stock, as using double-sided tape is really not an option for running higher cutting forces like this. Once complete, this was just a 15 minute operation and it was fast. The surface quality looks great and roughing in the hardware worked quite well. Compared to what's next, this was the easy work. Next up was to run a roughing operation on a block of 6061. And for this I'm running an adaptive clearing operation with a quarter inch three flute flat end mill with a quarter inch depth of cut and a radial load of 0.015 inch at around 70 inches per minute. While this cut is half the depth of the hardwood and 10% of the radial load, the cut worked really well. This really demonstrated the rigidity of the machine. For the cut, I also ran air and 10% mix of IPA water through the mister to keep things cool. While this cut took a bit longer, finishing the roughing in about one and a quarter hours, the surface finish was great. On the aluminum, I also ran a finishing pass to see how that would look, using a steep and shallow operation with a ball end mill to clean it up. These results on the 6061 were obviously more demanding on the machine, and while it was able to handle the workload, I feel like the spindle would need a better cooling solution to run this hard without any long-term implications. To wrap it up, in summary, the EVA 1 is a force to be respected by the industry. It's a desktop machine with a lot of ambition, capable of handling more than just your typical desktop project needs. And while it will handle your toughest jobs, don't expect it to be a replacement for any industrial grade machine. To be fair, these cuts would be nearly impossible on any other machine in its class. While I'm quite impressed with these results, Maker Dreams continues to evolve and improve the machine. They're improving their software offering while providing advanced spindle upgrades in the future. If you're in the market for a desktop CNC machine that can tackle your tough jobs, the Maker Dreams EVO 1 is a machine that you shouldn't look past. While there isn't a huge presence online, the company and the machine deserves more attention. You can visit MakerDreams.it to get all the specs and the latest info on the machine. I really enjoy using this machine. I'm able to accomplish any of the difficult operations that I would generally be worried about on the Shapeoko or the Nomad. I think you'll be quite impressed, and you'll definitely want to keep an eye on my channel as this machine is going to play an important role in many of the upcoming projects. That's going to do it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at the EVO 1 desktop CNC and some of the heavy duty work that it can perform. In the next video, I'll be focusing on delicate circuit board prototyping using the machine, so be sure to come back for that one. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. It'll help keep you in the loop on future updates. If you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care, and that's always a good thing. If you have any questions or there's anything you'd like to see on the EVO 1 CNC, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to incorporate that. If you'd like to support the channel, there are lots of ways to do that. Head over to DIY.engineering for more info, and it means a lot to me. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. We're back, my friends.